Hello YouTube, this is We All Juggle Knives. This is the Topps Bushcrafter Kukuri 7. Alright, now they spell Kukuri slightly differently for the name of this knife. Alright, that is intentional. That's just, that's the name of the product. Now, I want to give a special thanks to Topps Knives for sending this blade in to be tested by me. Uh, you know, there's a lot of companies that are kind of afraid to send in stuff because, you know, hard testing can make the knife look bad if it doesn't hold up. So it's good to see that Tops, they weren't afraid at all. They didn't give me any guidelines. They didn't say, you can't do this, you can't do this. Well, it's, it's good to see uh, a company that stands behind its stuff and is not afraid uh, to have it used hard. Now, this particular blade was designed by uh, the owner of a bushcrafting uh, company and website called LVI. I'm going to include the link to that bushcrafting website, and it has videos. If you want to see this uh, doing a lot of bushcrafting tasks, for example, feather sticks, and also how to field sharpen it, you can check out the videos on that website. Now, me personally, I do product testing, hard hard testing of products, okay? So this video is not going to be a, a lesson on bushcraft. This is not going to be a bushcraft course. This is going to be uh, testing use and possible abuse of this product to see if it can stand up to a, to a hard chopping and things like that. Now the steel on this is 1095 high carbon. It has micarta handle scales with red liners, full tang construction obviously, a quarter inch thick at the spine and it has the tops black powder traction coating. Now you see this is already well beat up because I've already filmed the testing footage which is coming shortly but first let me just show you there you can see the thickness there lanyard hole there and this is interesting because you know it's a flat flat grind into uh, a bevel primary bevel and then it's flat again then when you get to the actual edge itself that is a convexed edge. That edge has been convexed uh, for greater strength. Okay, so what we have here, it's, it's basically a saber grind into a convexed edge. Nice. Okay, so enough talk. I've done a lot of testing with this, and I have a highlight reel. It's about nine minutes of the highlights of all the testing. All right, so let's roll that in, and after that, I'll do size comparisons, I'll show you the sheath, and I'll give you final thoughts and conclusions. All right, enjoy the footage. is some hard wood. Had to switch to my good hand. All right, this whole little pile of wood, this is what it did in just but a few minutes. Look at all that, look at all that. Just a few minutes, easy. 
And can you drill a divot with the tip? Well, actually, this comes with two divots built into the handle scales. But if you wanted to drill your own divot in some wood, yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. You can drill a little depression in a piece of wood for whatever you need to do. I know some types of fire starting need a divot. Yeah, you can drill with the, you can drill with a tip. All right, you want to see it chop up a branch? This is an old dead branch I have. It's, it's two, uh, two big branches. Let me chop off the smallest one first and then feed it to it. There we go. All right, let's see what it can do to this big old, I don't know, elephant trunk of, of a branch. Like I said, the camera's a little in my way, but let's take that into account. Nice. Bump the camera. It's what it did. Okay, that was actually fun. Let me chop this big ass branch a little bit more. That was pretty fun. <laughs> nice notch. Nice little notch you want to build a shelter. Fit two branches together. There you go. Now I mainly do hard use and semi-abuse testing, but since this is a bushcrafter blade, let me try to do some not necessarily hard use, but just different types of cutting, like for example, drawing down this piece. You know what I mean? Just drawing it down. See how well it can do that. Yeah, I'm not much of a bushcrafter, but I'm used to just destroying, but let's try and some more subtle forms of cutting. You know, what we're doing here is, what if you had a branch and you had to make it flat for some reason, like you're building a trap or something, you had to make it flat on one side? Could this do that? It's doing it right now. All right, that's a pretty crappy job, but see, made it flat. All right, want to just see how hard this thing can chop? Just going to chop it a few times into this piece of wood. It hits very hard. How do you like that? I like what it did there. Who needs a baton? You just chop pieces of wood freehand. You don't even need a baton. You know, it's splitting pieces of wood off. Another test I like to do is just a simple tip strength test and tip penetration and strength. Just downward stab into a piece of wood real hard. See what happens.
All right, well, that's what happened. See those marks there? All right, it stabbed in deep, and the grip was very secure. I didn't have any trouble slipping down or anything like that. Grip was secure. Well, let me extract this. Nice. Another thing people want to know, can you use the tang, the extended tang as a hammer? Can you pound tent stakes? Brother, you can smash cinder block with that. All right, but I, I back the camera up for this one. I don't want pieces of cinder block hitting the old camera. And I am wearing eye protection for this. Throw that piece right off. piece right off. This is a thick piece too. I'll get it. I'm doing short swings because this is a blade. I mean you don't want to get too nuts. I'm going to do short swings. Alright, I don't give up easy. Up. There we go. <laughs> and there you go. Broke three pieces off this cinder block. And you know this ain't the crumbly, rotten kind because I hit it freaking dozen times or more before it broke. All right, and did the uh, extended tang survive? Yes, you see the cinder block's blood and guts on it, but it survived. All right, I'm going to hit this stump, uh, do some chopping against the grain. People say, oh no, you should never chop against the grain, you should only split wood. Look, splitting wood is not the only kind of chopping, all right? I like to be thorough, so we're going to bash this stump against the grain. All right, I hope you enjoyed that testing footage. Now here is a size comparison. Uh, starting from the left is a USMC K-Bar, and then there's a K-Bar Becker BK-5, and then there is the Bushcrafter Kukuri 7, and then a Nepalese Kukuri. All right, oh, please excuse any background noise. Now, as you can see, uh, the Bushcrafter 7, noticeably shorter than uh, the Nepalese Kukuri, Kukuri, uh, that is on purpose, you know, he's trying to design something with many of the benefits, but that will be easier to carry. All right, and as you can see, uh, the Kukuri 7 is about the same overall length as that uh, Becker BK-5. All right, and it is about an inch longer than a classic USMC K-Bar. All right, so that's the scale we're talking about. This is the sheath that the Bushcrafter Kukuri 7 comes with. It is a heavy-duty ballistic nylon sheath. It gives you a lot of mounting options. First of all, it is Molly compatible, all right, for military web gear. And see it has uh, those eyelets there. You could string paracord through, lash it to a pack. Right? And of course, it also has a belt loop there. It has a secondary pocket with a Kydex buckle also comes with one of the uh, flat tops emergency wh whistles. You can keep some uh, survival kit stuff in there. It has two horizontal retaining straps. They are Velcro. It does hold it in. It holds it securely. Make sure that strap is underneath that guard. That'll hold it in. It also has a hard plastic insert and deployment like so. Alright, so that is the sheath.
All right, final thoughts and conclusions. Well, let's point out the obvious. This thing is tough. It's durable. I mean, I used it for things that would be better suited for uh, a heavy, you know, 16-inch carpenter's hatchet, and it, it survived easily. One thing I especially like is the handle. You know, my hand, it's medium to medium large, and it fit very well, but there was still ample length that this could accommodate up to XXL sized male hands. But yet, even though they made it long enough for medium through XXL, they didn't make it overly wide. So it, it's perfectly comfortable for medium hands, but it'll fit the bigger hands too. And also, you know, even if you have medium hands like me, this allows you to choke down on the handle and add basically two inches of length um, to get the most powerful chops, okay? So it gives you a lot of options. If you choke up, it's more balanced. Uh, just a great handle overall and no hot spots. This arrived extremely sharp. You know, a couple years ago, I used to say that Topps knives didn't, didn't come razor sharp. I'm gonna have to change that because lately, the knives I've seen from them this year are all razor sharp. So I'm, I'm thinking that they uh, basically rethought their policy. And it seems like now Topps knives are, are being delivered uh, with a very, very nice edge put on them. And my final thoughts, you know, this item can do a lot, a lot of different outdoor camping and bushcraft tasks. The stuff I showed, that was really just the bare bones. I mean, just a few different hard usage tests and it was already uh, nine minutes of footage, okay? Um, I could have gone for an hour with different tasks, but I'm trying to be considerate of all my viewers. I know you have limited time, so it's always a balancing act between including enough footage, but making it short enough that you guys can actually finish the video. So all in all, an excellent blade. And I gotta thank Tops once again, because uh, without Tops, you wouldn't have seen this video. I, I was not even aware that this was out. This is just, uh, I think it's just been recently released, okay? Um, you know, it's funny, um, some companies like Tops, they really know how to use the internet to get out the word on their new products. Other companies, you would be amazed at some of the big, big companies that, you know, I, I contact them and I, I, I mean, I end up like feeling like I have to explain to them what the internet is. It's amazing. But yeah, Tops and other companies that I work with, they know the deal. They know that you guys are just cutlery fanatics and they want you to see their stuff. So good for them, good for me and good for you. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for many more. This has been We All Juggle Knives.